Hello Crafty Family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY project, we'll be creating this wood bench for displaying plants and decor inspired by a piece that I saw online for $129. Now I thought this bench was simply adorable and could be used in my home in so many ways. Now I was able to recreate this for less than $8 in wood and I have provided the complete list of supplies and tools that I used to make this project in the description box below. Now I'm so very excited to share this tutorial with you, but before we start, I wanted to say hey, hey, and welcome back to my awesome subscribers and visitors to my channel. Now if you are a new visitor to my channel today, and you love to create fun and easy DIY projects on a budget, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button, and also click that notification bell so you will be the first to know when a new DIY tutorial is ready to share with you. So now, let's jump right into the project. Now here is my inspiration piece for this project today. Now this cute bench kept popping up in my feed so I knew that there had to be a reason. So of course I just had to recreate it and since the $129 price tag was definitely out of the question, I went off to the drafting board and I designed my own version. Now I will be showing you all of the measurement cuts and step by step assembly of this project. Now for this project we'll need three packs of the five gallon paint stir sticks from the Home Depot for 98 cents. And we'll need three of the one by two pieces of wood. And now these come in lengths of eight feet and are very inexpensive at only $1.54 each at Home Depot. Now the first thing we're gonna do is work with those paint stir sticks and I will be cutting these at different lengths. So we're gonna take three sticks and leave them at the length in the package and they're packaged at 21 inches. And then I'm gonna take two stir sticks and cut them down to 20 inches. Two stir sticks are gonna be cut down to 19 inches and the last two will be cut at 18 inches. So I'm gonna lay out my grid mat as a guide and I'm gonna grab one of those paint stir sticks. Now they measure about 21 inches long. So I'm gonna mark that 21 inch mark with a piece of painter's tape on my mat. So once we have that, I'm gonna grab two of those 18 inch sticks and I wanna place one at the very end at the 21 inches and at the very beginning at the one inch mark. Now in order to keep these in place, I'm just gonna roll up a piece of painter's tape and put it on the back of each stick just to hold it right there in their place. And now I wanna grab one of those 21 inch sticks and we wanna put this right in the center between those two 18 inch sticks and this will end up being around the 10 inch mark. So now I'm gonna grab two more sticks and this is the 19 and 20 inch sticks and I wanna center them between that 21 inch and 18 inch stick and then tape them down into place and then grab the last two and do the same thing. So now all of my pieces are nice and secure and in place. So I'm gonna grab those two last paint sticks that are the 21 inches and I'm gonna place one near the top and place one about two inches above the bottom. Now once they're at their desired location, I'm gonna go ahead and mark the bottom of the stick across all of the sticks because I'll be taking it up to add some glue. Now you wanna do this at the top and at the bottom. And I'll be using my Surebonder wood stick hot glue and I'm just gonna put a dab of hot glue right on those paint sticks above the mark that we made. And then place that paint stick right on top of that and press it firmly into place. Now we're gonna repeat the same thing at the bottom as well. Now once that glue dries, you could take up your paint sticks and you'll see everything is all assembled and ready to go. Now to secure it, I'm gonna add a staple in the back of each one of those paint sticks going through to the other stick across the top and the bottom, and this will be sure to keep everything nice and secure together. So now we're gonna start working on our wood box. So I'm gonna take my one by twos. I'm gonna cut seven pieces at 19 and a half inches. I'm gonna cut four pieces at 10 and a half inches. I'm gonna cut four pieces at seven and a half inches. I'll cut two pieces at five and a half inches and four pieces at three inches. Now we're gonna go ahead and stain our wood and I put four sticks here, but we're gonna need five sticks at 19 and a half and four sticks at seven and a half inches. Now I'll be using my Jacobian stain by Mimwax to stain these. So when we stain these, we wanna stain all of the sides, the front, back sides, and even the two ends because they all will be showing in our project. And 
And once that first one is stained, just go ahead and stain the remainder of them and then sit them out for two and a half to three hours to completely dry. And here's that last one I didn't forget. So now while those dry, we're going to grab the last two 19 and a half inch sticks and two of the five and a half inch sticks. Now this, these are going to be for our box to hold our seat. So we're just going to lay the two long sticks out first and then sandwich those five and a half inch pieces in between them to make the box. Now again, I'm going to take my Sherbonder wood stick hot glue and I'm going to place it on the end of each one of those short sticks and then bond them to the top of that long stick. Now this will be a temporary bond for the box because we will be screwing this in place to make sure it holds up well. Just add two more dabs, dabs of that hot glue right on those ends there and press those into place. So once those are nice and secure and that glue has set, um, we are going to be screwing these together. So I'm going to grab um, four one and a quarter inch wood screws from my box. Now I've got a lot of questions come in about my box and I actually put this together myself. This is like one of those clear sorter box tackle boxes from the fishing section like at a Walmart. And I just grabbed individual packets of screws that I use often and placed them in here and then put little sticky labels in here labeling each one of the sizes. And it has come, to, come in so handy. And I just wanted to share that with you since I had a lot of questions. So now we're gonna take our drill and I want to drill pilot holes for these screws. Now we want to uh, drill these holes closer to that bottom edge of the box, about a quarter of an inch, maybe, maybe a little bit more, maybe a half an inch just near the bottom. And we're gonna put one of those screws in and screw it into place. And we wanna do this all the way around that box. And now you see all of the screws are in place near the bottom edge of the box. So now we're going to grab four of those 10 and a half inch pieces and these are going to be the legs of our bench. So I'm just going to stack them all nice and even making sure that edge is even and grab my ruler. Now what we want to do is measure up from the bottom about to the six inch mark and we want to draw a six inch line across the side of each one of those pieces. Now this line will be a guide on how we place it on our box. So we want the, that line that we drew to line up with the bottom edge of the box and this will go all the way around on all four corners of, those box, of this box. So now we're gonna add a generous amount of that wood stick hot glue. And again, we're gonna place this into place making sure that we line it up on that line that we drew. And this is one near the back. So we're gonna repeat this for the other side and we're gonna glue that into place as well. Now once the two back ones are applied, just flip it over and you wanna do the two front ones as well and make sure they line up on that line. And here are all four of them hot glued into place. So now I'm going to apply two screws into each leg on the side. So I am gonna drill a hole near the top and down near the bottom in an angle. And we just wanna avoid screwing through the same area we screwed through for the first screw. We just wanna screw right above it. And you can see how the angle is shown here. Now we're gonna repeat this all the way around and then take our screws and we are gonna put those screws in the side of those legs. And here's what the screws will look like and we're just gonna continue this all the way around. And here are all of those screws into place. So now we're gonna take our four three inch pieces and these are gonna be armrest holders for our bench. And you can see, we're just gonna sit them right on top at the top of our legs on the, at the very top of the bench. I'm just gonna add a little bit more of that wood stick hot glue and I'm going to place that wood rest piece right on top, making sure the inside edge is nice and flush. Now you do wanna make sure that these are even as possible and that hot glue should grab right onto it and hold it in place temporarily. Now, once we do the other side, all four sides have those armrest holders on there and we are good to go. So now I'm gonna grab the back fence area for the bench and our front and we're going to prime both of these with some Zinser 123 primer or you can use chalk paint if you choose to paint by hand. 
And then once it's all primed and dry, we can go ahead with our final coat and I'm using some of this Krylon Satin White or you can use another coat of chalk paint. So now our wood pieces are nice and dry and what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay out all five of those 19 and a half inch pieces all together as shown here. I'm gonna use my carpenter square that I picked up from the Dollar Tree to kind of keep them nice and square. Now what I'm gonna do is on the side of the piece, I'm just gonna put several small dots of that hot glue along the side and press it against the next one. You don't wanna put a very thick bead because you do not want it oozing through the seam. You just wanna uh, create that initial bond between the pieces and then complete this for all five pieces. And here is the solid piece all together after gluing it at the seam. So we're going to repeat this for the armrest pieces as well. We're just going to put two of them together and then put a few beads of hot glue in between them and press them together as well. And now we have our two armrest pieces. So go ahead and set those to the side and now our bench frame is nice and dry with that final coat. So the first thing we want to do is just to make sure our bench platform fits in between there and if we cut everything right it should fit nice and even. And when we do fit it we're going to make sure the back of that bench platform is even with the back of the frame. So to initially adhere it, I'm gonna run a nice generous bead of that wood hot glue along the top of that frame and sit that bench piece right on top. Now you want the back to be flush with the back panel and the front will have a lip of about a half an inch overlapping. So as you can see here, the front part overlaps a little bit and all the sides are nice and even. Now once that's secure in place, we're going to work on those armrests and all we're going to do is take our armrest piece and we are going to align it with the back and the sides of that armrest. So go ahead and apply a generous amount of that hot glue on top of that armrest piece and gently place that armrest piece right on top and that will overlap in the front about a half an inch as well, but it'll be flush and even with the back. And then repeat this for the other side. And here is everything all bonded together and ready to be permanently secured. So now what we want to do is we are going to add two screws into that armrest because as you recall we only hot glued those armrest supports in. So I'm just going to drill straight down into that leg portion and through the armrest support all the way down into that wood. We're going to uh, make two screw holes. And then we're going to take some two inch wood screws and we are going to secure these together. And I'm choosing longer screws because it does have to go through the armrest, through the support and into the leg. And that'll ensure that these armrests will not be budging. And now you want to repeat this for the other side. Now even though that seat does sit on a frame and shouldn't budge, that front piece does overlap. So just to secure that one in place, I am also going to drill a pilot hole in the upper corner of the front piece on each side. And then I'm going to be putting in some one inch wood screws in each side just to hold that in place. Now you certainly could put a wood screw in each one of the planks, but I think for the purpose of displaying and decor items, there really isn't no need and the hot glue should hold it perfectly. So now I'm gonna flip it upside down and just for reassurance, I am taking that wood stick hot glue and I'm running a bead along the inside bottom of the frame all the way around the bottom bench and also underneath those armrests. So this should lock it into place. The wood stick hot glue is much stronger than regular hot glue. So now those wood screws are showing, so I like to cover them up with a little acrylic. So I'm mixing some nutmeg brown and some black, and I'm just going to dab it on the inside and around that screw head in a color that closely matches the stain. I like to let it dry and then dab a second coat on top when that dries, and that should hold up pretty well throughout the life of the project. So now that the back of the bench is nice and dry, we can start working with that and attach it. So now that our bench is done, we can sit the bench with the back side down against it and just make sure everything lines up. And if your measurements were cut right, everything should be even. So you want to flip it with the face side down, the good side down, and have the back facing you for the bench. And we're going to run a bead of hot glue along the back of each leg. 
So I'm going to take that wood stick wood hot glue and I'm going to run a bead down both of the legs making sure you use a generous amount and then place that fence piece right on top. Now both sides should be even with the width of the bench and you want to make sure the bottom is even with the bottom of that leg as well and just press it firmly into place. And it's now secured to the bench and to make it permanent we are going to put two screws in the back along the side. So I'm going to take my drill and I'm going to drill two pilot holes, one near the top near the armrest and one near the bottom. And then I'm going to pay, take some three quarter inch wood screws and I'm going to put a wood screw in each one of those pilot holes. These don't have to be as long since it's only going through a wood stick into that um, one by two piece of wood. So here are both screws into place and you want to repeat this on the other side. Now once those screws are into place, everything is put together on your bench. You just flip it over, you want to check for glue webs and any kind of sawdust, clean it up, and now you are ready to put it on display. Now here is the fully assembled bench completed. Oh my goodness, how amazing does this look? Now these inexpensive cuts of wood always take stain beautifully and it turned out great. And the thicker five gallon paint stir sticks were the perfect shape for the backing. Now the armrests were a perfect accent and they match the bench perfectly. And now I've added a few of my favorite spring decor items and it brings the entire look together. Now you all have to let me know, how would you decorate this piece for your home? There's so many options year round. Listen, if you love DIYs on a budget, please give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She's So Crafty EE on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest for the latest news, sneak peeks, and giveaways. Now, if you like videos like these and you don't want to miss the next one, make sure you're subscribed by clicking that subscribe button below or just click on my She's So Crafty logo on your screen and hit the bell to be notified when the next DIY goes live. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.